You might already know this, but I really love Swift Playgrounds. In fact, I'm even building a game using it. But something I haven't covered yet on this channel is what iPad should you get? The simple, quick answer is get whatever iPad you can afford as long as it's a recent iPad. Now, if you want more details than that, that's what we're gonna dive into today. But if that's all you came for, I'll see you in the next one. When it comes to writing apps for the iOS App Store, you need to have access to Apple's ecosystem. And up until recently, that meant you needed to have a Mac because you needed Xcode and Xcode only is available on Mac OS. With the release of Swift Playgrounds 4, Apple allows you to submit your apps from Swift Playgrounds to the App Store without needing a Mac at all. This lowers the barrier to entry to the iPad, which is great for people who are on a budget or for people who just don't wanna have a Mac but have an iPad. But there are a whole bunch of different iPads and do you really need to get the iPad Pro to write apps in Swift Playgrounds? There is a bit of nuance here and it really depends on your budget and what you want out of this whole experience. So I have three iPads in my household. I have my daughter's a butterfly case covered iPad, which is just a hand-me-down fifth generation basic entry-level iPad, and that has the A9 chip in it with two gigs of RAM. I use an iPad Pro from a few years ago. It has the A12Z chip, and that came with six gigabytes of RAM. And my wife has the brand new iPad Air with the M1 chip, which has eight gigs of RAM. So I played around with these three iPads using the app that I'm building now in Swift Playgrounds and just got a feel for how the three of them perform. Now, as you might expect, the iPad Air is easily the best. I mean, it's the most powerful processor. It's the newest one. And yeah, it's gonna crush this uh, software, especially since Swift Playgrounds is supported all the way down to this, this A9 processor basic iPad. So the real question is, is what's the difference between these? Well, for me, I didn't notice too much of a difference between the Air and the couple of generations old Pro that I have. The biggest thing was that the Pro actually felt a little bit faster in some cases because it has ProMotion on the display, which allows it to refresh faster, making those animations snappier and the overall experience felt a little more fluid. That isn't to say the iPad Air feels bad, it's just that ProMotion does make a difference. Now, I did actually quantify this a little bit with an experiment. I decided to compile the app, which is a small app as you saw last week. What I ended up coming up with was that the iPad Air with the M1 chip was able to compile this app in 1.5 seconds. The iPad Pro, which again is not the M1 iPad Pro, it's the generation before that, did it in about three seconds. And this old A9 chip was still able to compile it, but in a very slow 12 seconds. Now, obviously this is a very small app and as you build your app and build it out, you could expect that this iPad here that's multiple years old and is really on the edge of being the end of life. You know, it may not even see iOS 16, but if this can do it, then my assumption is that any recent iPad and even the base model iPad for $329, like this generation or maybe the last generation should be able to do a, a even better job than that. And that's the point here is that as long as you can find an iPad that fits your budget, you should be fine. Now, some things to consider with the Pro and the Air is that you're gonna get the, the new pencil, the new design, uh, the better keyboard uh, attachability, the better magnets and whatnot. So you're gonna get all of that. You're gonna get longer support from the chip just because it's gonna be a more powerful chip. And that's gonna be important if you wanna do things other than just write small apps. If you want to build a bigger app, if you want to be able to design the assets for the app using things like Procreate or other apps within your portfolio to build this out and you wanna do it all on the iPad, then having more RAM and more GPU power might be important to you. So you're gonna to want to get that M1 chip or you know maybe an older generation Pro. All right, here's the thing. If you wanna code on your iPad, 
the only reason that I can see to get an iPad to purposefully build an app for the App Store is if you're on a really tight budget. Otherwise, this is a great learning tool. So if you wanna to learn to code, an iPad's a good solution if, if you wanna use your iPad for other things than just code. You know, because you wanna learn how to draw, you wanna learn how to code, you wanna learn how to maybe do some other stuff, you wanna take notes, with a pen in a digital format, you know, all sorts of things. You wanna use it for gaming and so on and so forth, right? You have a whole list of things you wanna use the iPad for and coding is one of them. Then yeah, it makes sense, get a powerful iPad. But if coding is the only thing you wanna do and you wanna learn Swift Playgrounds just so that you can start getting your feet wet with Swift, then start cheap. You don't need this one. This one's trash because it's, well, not trash. I mean, it's still good, it runs and it does, it does do stuff, but I can't recommend going on eBay and paying, you know, $100 for, for this iPad out of warranty with, uh, you know, no guarantee that, you know, the, the battery is gonna be any good and it's questionable history. But the base level iPad that Apple sells is $329. And you can usually find that cheaper through a reseller like Amazon or Best Buy um, on sale or through like an open box or a refurbished deal. So that would be the approach that I would take. You still get um, some kind of warranty. You get a new device or a refurbished device and you're gonna get something newer than this. You're gonna get an A13, I think is the current generation chip that's in the base level iPad. This one doesn't even have pencil support. So if you wanted to, to do the uh, iPad pencil stuff and the keyboard stuff, you can do that with the base level iPad. They have all of that stuff. This one came out before those things, so it doesn't have support for that. The Pro and the Air are if you wanna do more, if you want to build bigger apps, if you want to design your assets in apps like Procreate, or if you want to play games on the side while you're making apps, right? There's just more power there. There's more graphics power in the Pro line of chips. M1 chip is in the iPad Air now. So yeah, you can upgrade if you have the room and you have the justification to, but again, if it just comes down to writing code, get the base iPad because that's the easiest one. And if it just comes down to writing code and you're thinking about getting the iPad Pro, then why not just get a Mac? Because that's gonna be in a league of its own, right? Xcode is where you want to be ultimately. So that's my recommendation. I, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, here's a playlist of the uh, app that I'm building on my iPad because you know I can and I'm choosing to do it as a challenge, not because it's the best thing to do, but hey, it's it's been fun. And yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the next one.